Exodus 24. Then he said to Moses, Come up to Yahweh, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and you shall all worship at a distance. Moses alone, however, shall come near to Yahweh, but they shall not come near, and the people shall not come up with him. Then Moses came and recounted to the people all the words of Yahweh and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Yahweh has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of Yahweh. Then he arose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain with twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the sons of Israel, and they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed young bulls as peace offerings to Yahweh. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and the other half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that Yahweh has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. So Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant, which Yahweh has cut with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses went up with Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel, and under his feet there appeared to be a pavement of sapphire, as clear as the sky itself. Yet he did not stretch out his hand against the nobles of the sons of Israel. And they beheld God, and they ate and drank. Now Yahweh said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and remain there, and I will give you the stone tablets with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses arose with Joshua his attendant, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. But to the elders he said, Remain here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you, Whoever has a legal matter, let him approach them. Then Moses went up to the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. And the glory of Yahweh dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses from the midst of the cloud. And the appearance of the glory of Yahweh was like a consuming fire on the mountaintop in the eyes of the sons of Israel. Then Moses entered the midst of the cloud as he went up to the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. John 3 Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which has been born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who has been born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness of what we have seen and you do not accept our witness. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no one has ascended into heaven, but he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes will in him have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds be exposed. But he who practices the truth comes to the light, 
so that his deeds may be manifested as having been done by God. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he was spending time with them and baptizing. And John also was baptizing in Anon near Salim, because there was much water there, and people were coming and were being baptized, for John had not yet been thrown into prison. Therefore there arose a debate between John's disciples and a Jew about purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who is with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have borne witness, behold, he is baptizing, and all are coming to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given him from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. So this joy of mine has been made full. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is from the earth and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. What he has seen and heard, of that he bears witness, and no one receives his witness. He who has received his witness has set his seal to this, that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Job 42 Then Job answered Yahweh and said, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have declared that which I did not understand, things too marvelous for me, which I did not know. Hear now, and I will speak. I will ask you, and you make me know. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore I reject myself, and I repent in dust and ashes." Now it happened after Yahweh had spoken these words to Job, that Yahweh said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My anger burns against you and against your two friends, because you have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. So now, take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up a burnt offering for yourselves, and my servant Job will pray for you. For I will accept him, so that I may not do with you according to your folly because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuite and Zophar the Namathite went and did as Yahweh told them, and Yahweh accepted Job. And Yahweh restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends, and Yahweh increased all that Job had twofold. Then all his brothers and all his sisters and all who had known him before came to him, and they ate bread with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him for all the calamity that Yahweh had brought on him. And each one gave him one kesetah, and each a ring of gold. And Yahweh blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had fourteen thousand sheep and six thousand camels, one thousand pairs of oxen and one thousand female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. And he named the first Jemamah, and the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapuk. Now in all the land no women were found so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. And after this Job lived one hundred forty years, and saw his sons and his grandsons four generations. Then Job died, an old man and full of days. 2 Corinthians 12 It is necessary to boast, though it is not profitable. But I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who, fourteen years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or out of the body I do not know, God knows, such a man was caught up to the third heaven. And I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which a man is not permitted to speak. On behalf of such a man I will boast. But on my own behalf I will not boast, except in weaknesses. For if I do wish to boast, I will not be foolish, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from this, 
so that no one will consider me beyond what he sees in me or hears from me, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations. For this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might leave me. And he has said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast in my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions and hardships for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I have become foolish. You yourselves compelled me. For I ought to have been commended by you. For in no respect was I inferior to the most eminent apostles, even if I am nothing. The signs of a true apostle were worked out among you with all perseverance, by signs and wonders and miracles. For in what respect were you treated as less than the rest of the churches, except that I myself did not become a burden to you? Forgive me this wrong. Here for this third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be a burden to you, for I do not seek what is yours, but you. For children ought not to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. So I will most gladly spend and be fully spent for your souls. If I love you more, am I to be loved less? But be that as it may, I did not burden you myself. Nevertheless, crafty fellow that I am, I took you in by deceit. Have I taken advantage of you through any of those whom I have sent to you? I encouraged Titus to go, and I sent the brother with him. Did Titus take any advantage of you? Did we not walk in the same spirit, in the very same steps? All this time you think we are defending ourselves to you. We speak in Christ in the sight of God, and all these things, beloved, are for your building up. For I am afraid that perhaps when I come I may find you to be not what I wish, and may be found by you to not be what you wish, that perhaps there will be strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, slanders, gossip, arrogance, disturbances, I am afraid that when I come again my God may humiliate me before you, and I may mourn over many of those who have sinned in the past and not repented of the impurity, sexual immorality, and sensuality which they have practiced.